What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla and the overall market. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit a thousand bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total, not to mention 8.1% APY. The offer ends very soon in just about uh, 10 days from now. So check it out before they run out. Anyways, I just want to say that there's going to be some crazy volatility in the market today. We have two gaps, one above and one below. Either the market's about to see a big dump and then a pump later on in the afternoon, or we're about to see a big pump and then a dump after that. One of those two is most likely going to come, and whether or not we get that move depends on the levels. So I want to talk about those in just a couple of minutes. Yesterday, we saw a lot of tech stocks lead the way up, such as like Tesla and NVIDIA, and one of the best days of 2024. So we'll see if momentum remains or if the market needs to cool off a bit first. Now, for data, there's not really much coming out for today. Today is Friday, September 20th, 2024. At 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do have Harker from the Fed giving a speech, but it's very minor, so I'm not really expecting much from it. Now, I want to call out that today is a significant day because we have quadruple witching. This means that we have over 1.1 million of these calls expiring today and over 3 points or almost 3.3 million of these puts expiring. So it's a 2.87 put to call ratio. That's very, very significant. And we'll see which, which uh, of these the market makers favor. I think what's going to happen is I think there's a trap being set, and I think they're going to try to screw over both sides. Either, either they pump the market really hard and fake out you know, a lot of bulls, and then they give us a rug pull, or it's the opposite. They, they give us a big dump in the daytime for the first couple of hours, get the bears all excited only to pump the market right back up. It's got to be one of those two, a, a big dump and a pump, or a pump and a dump. I think it's going to most likely be one of those. That's my prediction for the markets. Uh, the market is once again holding up near all-time highs, so we'll see if it can maintain its levels. Besides that, I didn't see anything else that was too crazy on the news, but just know the market is still kind of reacting to the things Jerome Powell said. We're not necessarily done yet. The volatility still remains. So what do I see for the markets? Uh, it depends on our levels. So as far as SPY goes, we're looking at 568 as our main support zone. If we hold 568 and we start trying to break past uh, basically this 569.5 area, I think we could be trying to fill this gap above and start pushing into the 570s again, and that could turn us back up. If we don't hold 568, we start dipping below this, we start slowly losing it. We're at risk of coming down to fill this gap, taking us all the way down to about the 565 area. So it's got to be one of those two. Either we lose 568, we don't hold it, and we start dipping down to fill this gap, taking us down to like 565, but then SPY could bounce off that and start pushing up higher again to fill this other gap. So that could fake out a lot of the bears. Or we get a big rally. We start off with a rally to fill these gaps, and then we end up dipping lower. My gut is telling me that we're going to be dipping a little bit to try to fill this gap. I think we're going to be seeing a little bit of a bearish move, especially when you look at the daily. We have this like doji, which could suggest that we're coming back down. So we could fill this gap and try to bounce back up later on. And I find that's to be the most likely case. But watch your levels just for confirmation. Uh, this is what the trap is going to be looking like. We dip a little bit. They fake out the bears, get the bears all excited, only to push us back up. And that could squeeze shorts. For NVIDIA, NVIDIA is indecisive right now, but if we end up losing the 116 area, especially our 20 EMA, I think that we're going to be coming all the way down to fill the gap to the 114. So we'll see if we bounce off that. If we break past 118, we're looking for 120, but as of right now, I'm seeing some weakness, so it could dip a little bit. Uh, that looks a little bit more favorable, so we'll see what it does from there. For Bitcoin, we need to try to reclaim 64,000, otherwise we're at risk of dipping to about 62,500. Uh, and if that fails us, if 62,700 fails us, we could be coming all the way down to 61,870. There is a risk of this dipping a little bit lower. For ES, we're on a bit of a downtrend right over here. We have 5750 as our main support. We'll see if that holds or not. And we have resistance at 5780. This is at risk of dipping down towards where this wick is, and we'll see if it bounces or not. I still see potential for downside. For Tesla, uh, we're kind of rejecting right here. We have basically 242 as our main support. If that fails us, we're looking for 240, followed by 238 and below. We also have resistance at this 244 area, so we'll see which way it goes from here. But I see a risk of this dipping a little bit lower. Tesla could cool off a bit after such a bullish day yesterday. And then, then we'll see if we get a big breakout. If we break 244 first, we're looking for 246 and 248. We have our levels up here. Uh, we push up higher and then end up dumping, or we could just dump first before we get the bounce. My gut is telling me looking at this setup, we might dip a little bit on Tesla towards 240, maybe a little below that, and then we could be looking for a bounce after that. For NQ, 
We're barely consolidating around this 20,000 area. If we don't hold it, we could be dipping back down towards 19,800. Then we could try to bounce after that. And if we do hold above this, we could be looking for 20,200 and then reject. To me, it looks like it might dip first and then try to bounce. So watch for that. On the QQQ, it's the same thing. If we end up losing 480, we're looking for a dip down. Uh, basically, 478 is going to be our first support. And if 478 fails, since we have that gap to fill towards 475. So either we end up dipping to 480, and then we'll see if we get a bounce and start pushing back up to 485. But if we lose 480, 480 we're looking for a lot of these supports like 478 and then 475 to be tested. Then we could bounce after that. If we do try to bounce first, if we break past 485, we remain bullish. But then we could reject later on. So I'm thinking what's going to happen is we either pump and dump or dump and then pump. I'm thinking it's going to dump first and then try to get that pump. So that, that's what I find to be more probable. For Apple, we have this range between 228 and 230. If we break past 230, we're looking for 232. And if we end up losing 228, we're looking for a small dip. We're in the middle right now. Apple is still holding it very well compared to the market. So it might shuffle. We'll see if 228 holds. It could dip a little bit and then try to bounce. We'll see about that, but it's doing a good job at holding up so far, so it's showing some strength compared to the market. For the IWM, we have 224 as resistance and this main support down here at 221. If we end up dipping a little bit, we'll see if 222 holds us. If the 222.5 area fails us, I think we dip down to fill this gap towards the 220 area. And we'll see if we bounce off that. If we break past this imbalance towards 225, we could turn back up and then reject. I think we might dip first to fill this gap and then bounce, so give this the time it needs. For Amazon, we're stuck in the middle, we have 191 as resistance, and if we end up losing support at 188, we'll be dipping back down towards the support here. So if we end up losing 190, we're looking for 188, and if we break past 191, we remain more bullish. We will see we're kind of stuck in the middle. Uh, we haven't broken past key resistance or lost key support yet. So we'll see, we still have that gap below, so give it some time. For Meta, we basically have 560 as our resistance. If this breaks, we're looking for basically 565. If you reject it, we'll be dipping back down to 555. So we're kind of stuck in the middle here. So we'll see. Um, but I just want to make it very clear that um, we are in a range right now on Meta. We're showing some strength, but 560 is a stubborn area. We're kind of consolidating right here, so we might see some consolidation for now. Meta is struggling to hold above 440, so it could be dipping a little bit lower to fill this gap towards 435 before it tries to bounce. If we lose 436.6, we're going to be coming down to fill that gap around 430. The 434 is, excuse me, not 435. Then we'll see if we bounce after that. If we break past 440, we could try to push first and then get the dump. But this looks more like it wants to dip down to fill this gap. That looks a little bit more favorable to me before it tries to bounce. On the other hand, Google is showing more strength than Microsoft. We have 165 as a key resistance. It's still trading around this. We'll see if it could break this or not. If we break this, we're looking for 166. If not, we could reject back down. If we lose 163 flat, then I think we fill the gap all the way down to the 161s. So we'll see, guys, if we can try to hold up. It's still stuck between 163 and 165. Whichever direction breaks will determine a much bigger move. Anyways, that's it for my update, guys. The market's going to open in about 10 minutes, so I'll see you guys very soon in the next one. Thank you for listening, and we will see how these levels end up panning out. Remember, the market's going to either dump hard and then get a big pump, or we're about to see a big pump first and then dump. It looks like it wants to dump first before we get the pump, so keep that in the back of your guys' minds. All right, I'll see you guys soon, and peace out.